That's it. I can't even touch the Can ground. we get a shot there of uh, Hayley? Look at Hayley there. She's got her legs just swinging in the breeze there, haven't you, Hayley? Yes. That's all right. Hey, Hayley, mm -hmm. Hayley Mills. It's a night for famous uh. names. The famous actress <laughs> Hayley Mills. Yes. How many people bring that up to you? Not so much anymore. But I used to get it a lot. You used to get it a lot. Were you yeah. named after Hayley Mills or was it just no. coincidence? Just Ma a coincidence. Mum and Dad didn't know anything of it? No. She, Mum likes, likes to make a joke though that yeah. she couldn't call me Anna and she couldn't call me Cara. Why is that? Animals. Cara Mills. Animals and caramels. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth is your mum. Hi Elizabeth. Hi. How are you? Did you know about Hayley Mills? Yes and no, but for three days she was known as like BG Mills, so we had to give her something. Yeah. So. Oh, Hayley's a good name, isn't she? Yeah. All right, Hayley Mills, you're 19 years of age from Hampton yes. Park in Victoria, criminology student. Yes. What Deacon. do you want to do at Deakin University? Yeah. Well, I don't really know what I want to do yet. I just want to do something in the criminal justice system. Yeah? Yeah. Good on you. Okay. At age two, you fell out of a Bunnings trolley, and as a result of that, they had to get pins in your elbow, yep. and Bunnings gave your mum free stuff so she wouldn't sue, yep. even though it wasn't their fault. Yeah, it was my fault. Cause she told me to sit down, because it was before the kids' seats came in, so I was leaning up, she told me to sit down, I didn't, they went around a corner and I just tumbled straight out. Let's go for a thousand dollars. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know. Seersucker is a type of what? A fabric. B. Flowering plant. C. Candy. D. Detergent. Yeah, I don't know this, so I'm just gonna pass. You're straight out the door? Yeah, I don't know this. See you later, sucker. Uh, see you, sucker. <laughs> Hello, Luke Marks. 33 years of age from Ballarat and Victoria, business manager with Caltex. Lauren is your sister. Hello, Lauren. Hi, Eddie. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hey, t tell me about this. Uh, you, you, uh, Sam is your wife of two years. You've got a little baby, Harrison, who's one. You do. You found a copy of your wife's birth notice in your photo album, which had been in there for 20 years before you met. Yes. Uh, how? Sure. So my wife and brother are only about five days apart, but when my son was born, my mum brought around my baby album just to see what you know, compare features and that when we were about the same age. And um, there's some pictures of my brother in there as well as his birth notice and then just the little newspaper clipping cut out of the paper. And when we opened up the cover, that fell out on the floor and I went to pick it up and I found another piece of paper behind it. And it was actually Sam's birth notice cut out absolutely perfectly and had been sitting in that, in that folder for a good 20 odd years. Why was it in there? Just randomly cut out. It must be on the back side of the piece of paper they cut out. Yeah. So, yeah. And did she, had she ever seen her birth notice? Or? Uh, oh, she may have when she was younger, but yeah, it's just a very spooky. There you uh, go. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Means nothing really, does it? No. Really? no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James Hetfield from Metallica winked at you in the front row of a concert, is that right? I'm claiming it. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he had something in his eye. Oh, maybe. <laughs> no, he no. gave you a wink, mate. All right, let's go. Seersucker. Is a type of what? Fabric, flowering plant, candy, detergent. Uh, I have a feeling it's a fabric. Candy. Lock it in? Yeah, lock it in. A seersucker suit is correct for a thousand dollars. Yeah, a lightweight fabric, recognisable for its crinkled or puckered appearance. We have got nine questions to go for a quarter of a million dollars, and we'll do it right after the break in the hot seat. If you see something, something amazing, if something blew up, become a nine new source. Shoot it, send it, see it on nine news. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Vin Diesel in the action blockbuster. Pitch Black, tonight 8.30 on Nine Gun. You can enjoy the wind in your hair when your DHA investment property has its rent guaranteed for up to 12 years. Look forward to tomorrow and today. Find out more at dha.gov.au slash look forward. The Triton GLS Sports Edition. 41,990 drive away with black fenders, 17-inch alloys, sports bar and nudge bar. Now it's tough. Mitsubishi Triton. Built tough for work and play. Palmerston Furniture and Bedding September Super Sale. Gel Deluxe Mattress, only $1,295. Gel Luxury, Pocket Spring Support. Palmerston Furniture and Bedding, where price is part of the comfort. 
Transform your bedroom storage into an organised oasis with Elfa Shelving Solutions. The versatile Elfa system provides easy access for all your storage needs. Come and see the great range on display at Form Function NT, Bishop Street, Woolner. Battery World keeps you switched on. If your car battery ever lets you down, call this number, it won't. 13 17 60. Your local Battery World 24 hour roadside battery assistance. Phone 13 17 60. Has winning Powerball changed us? Nah. You still have to keep an eye on the weather. This Thursday, Powerball has jackpotted to $15 million. What would you change with $15 million? Fashion comes and goes. But one thing that never goes out of style is quality. For over 50 years, Dabsco has been Darwin's supplier of quality blinds, awnings, security screens, crim safe and home improvement products. We will have a quality product to make your home beautiful. And so affordable. At Dabsco, our quality never goes out of style. Shop local at Cartridge World Stewart Park. We stock a large range of inks and toners. Try our Cartridge World Premium range in store now. Find out how you can save on your printing costs by shopping local at Cartridge World Stewart Park. At Bow Repairs, get four Goodyear or Dunlop tyres from a price so low, we don't need to resort to cheap gimmies. Well, maybe just a few cute ones. And if you find a lower price on one of our quality products, we'll match it. It's part of our best value promise. Who cares? Bow Repairs. I'm a bit offended as well, mate. The Sunday that will shock the nation is here. 10,000 couples applied to be on this series of the block and have the opportunity that you have right now. This is just pathetic. It's beyond rude. It's a slap in the face to everyone involved. In other words, you need to go hard or go hard. The explosive drama. Now, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. That will grip you to the very last second. You are off the block. Sunday, 7 o'clock on 9. Luke Marks is in the hot seat, ready to go. We have got five contestants and nine questions to get to for a quarter of a mil. Good luck, Luke. This Thank is you. for 1500 E-Type is the name of a classic series of sports car produced by which brand? A Porsche, B Jaguar, C Ferrari, D Lamborghini. Uh, can we lock in B please, Eddie Jaguar? The E-Type Jag is locked in and correct for $1,500. $2,500. Which singer had a hit in 1968 with the song Stand By Your Man? A, Loretta Lynn, B, Dolly Parton, C, Tammy Wynette, D, Patsy Cline. Oh, I should know this one. Um, I can hear it in my head right Stand now. Stand by your man. Yeah. Um, Made I'm, famous by Steve Kernahan and who? I might have to pass already. You're going to pass? Yeah, I am. Catch yeah. you later. Nice. See you, Luke. Thank Bye. You. Hello, Chris Betlinski. Yes. Chris is a home loan lending specialist yes. from the NAB. Indeed, what indeed. What makes you a specialist at home loan lending? Well, I know a lot about loans. That's it? Yeah. You like giving them out to people? I love it. Good. Love it. Helping people out's a good thing, yeah, you know? Mate, you help them achieve their dreams. You're a dream weaver, aren't you? Absolutely. That's the way to describe Jesus. yourself. Can you do my profile? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you're absolutely. Doing well. Chris? Let's get on with it, yes. mate. Yes. Mm. Which singer had a hit in 1968 with the song Stand By Your Man? Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, Tammy Wynette, Patsy Cline. Oh, jeez. If I had have had that $1,000, uh, I would have pumped it up to the wife. But uh, no. I don't think it's uh, Dolly or Patsy. I'm just trying to remember whether uh, Loretta Lynn did it. Um, Stand By Your Man. Yeah. 10 seconds. 
Look, uh, I'm going to take a punt. I'm going to go for Tammy Wynnett. Uh, see. Log in seat, Tammy Wynnett. Correct for two and a half thousand dollars. Just feel the uh, the, the uh, don't have the a heart attack. Don't on. have a heart attack. Feel the clock's moving now. Their biggest yeah, hit yeah. sold over two million copies. Made her a superstar. Loretta Lynn actually recorded a cover version of the song a year later on an album track. I didn't say hello to your Lynn. Hello, Lynn. How are you? Very good, thank you. All good. Yes. Good stuff. All right, let's go for four thousand dollars. The farthest city from London, England, is which place in New Zealand? A. Auckland. B. Wellington. C. Christchurch. D. Dunedin. Ooh. Um, Auckland and Wellington are up fairly high. Between Christchurch and Dunedin. Um, Christchurch is a little bit higher than Dunedin, so uh, I think it's D. Dunedin. Yes, uh, I think I'll, I'll lock in D. Thanks, Eddie. Locked in. And correct for four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Dunedin is the southernmost New Zealand city. It's about nineteen thousand and eighty kilometres from London. Six thousand. Which of these Australian newspapers is not owned by Fairfax Media? A. The Canberra Times. B. The Australian. C. The Sydney Morning Herald. D. The Age. Uh, ooh. Which of these Australian newspapers is not owned by Fairfax Media? Australian. The Australian and the Age, I think, uh, are Sydney Morning Herald. Is that... Uh, uh, I Ten. have no idea about Canberra Times. Six. Uh, can pass. Five. Four. Yeah, look, I'll three, pass, Eddie. Two. I'm not sure. Passing out. Yep. Thank you very much, Ray. <laughs> Good, That's you. the way. Lynn Finn is from Petrie in North Brisbane, Queensland. Mm -hmm. uh, retired public servant. Anthony's her husband up the back. Good morning, Anthony. Great yeah. to have you on the show, mate. Right, let's go, Lynn. Which of these Australian newspapers is not owned by Fairfax Media? Canberra Times, The Australian, The Sydney Morning Herald or The Age? Oh, gosh. I don't, I don't have a clue on this. Um... Do you read any papers? <laughs> yes, I do. But they're Brisbane ones, usually. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say A, please. Canberra Times. Canberra Times, lock it in. Yes, please. Lock it in. Three of them are Fairfax, one of them is News Limited, and the one that is the News Limited one is uh, Rupert Murdoch's uh, national broadsheet called The Australian. Um, okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Lynn. That's fine. Good on you. Thanks very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you very much. Good stuff. <laughs> Good on you, Joe. Right, five questions for $100,000 for you. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Joe Byrne for six grand. Which origins in feudal... Sorry, with origins in feudal times, which of these is not a rank in the British peerage? A, Earl. B, Duke. C, Baronet. D, Viscount. Uh, Earl and Duke, I'm pretty sure are. Uh, I mean, you've got Barons, so Baronet. It's probably associated with that. Viscount... Sounds not British, so I'm leaning towards D, Viscount. Don't forget you got a lifeline there, pal. Yeah. I'm going to, to use the 100 grand later if I really want to get there. Five, four. D, Viscount. Thanks. You Eddie. sure you want to do it or not? Yeah. Okay, it's here, mate. There's no later. No, Baronet is the answer. Yeah, the five ranks from highest to lowest are Duke. Marquis, Earl, Viscount, Baron. Baronet is a hereditary title which bestows ah, the yep. honorific title of Sir, but is still a commoner status. So you're sort of right with Baron, but uh, you weren't right with Baronet. That was That's the answer right. there. Oh, you got your thousand dollars, Joe. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. mate. Thank you. All right, Harry, you're back. That didn't take long. No. <laughs> Haley Mills is 19. Let's go for $6,000 okay. when we return right after this in the hot seat.
Business News Update, brought to you by Hidden Valley Ford's extended warranty from three to five years on every Ranger and Transit. Tonight on Nine News, the same-sex marriage postal survey will go ahead after the High Court dismissed a challenge to have it overturned. The latest on the top-end bushfire threat and why our students are taking their classes outdoors. The details, Nine News at Six. The real reason why the father of footy superstar Dustin Martin has been banned from returning to Australia to watch his son play. A current affair tonight. Victor's been bowling, hitting pins and sinking beers. How much have you had? Now, the breath test. Will he get a perfect strike and go home a winner? Or blow it? Okay, go. That'll do. And be out of the game. <laughs> what do I do? New RBT, tonight on 9. We've hit the road and landed on the New South Wales mid-north coast to see what's happening with this season's blueberries. So, Harry, the weather's been cooler than expected. Mm. So crops have come in a bit late, but supply and quality are really stepping up. Oh, yes, Prices yeah. will be great. Yeah. I hear you're expecting 50% more fruit than last year. The quality's superb and they get them to Woolworths straight away. They're beautiful. More picking less eating, please. See you next week on the Woolworths Fresh Market Update Road Trip. See what you can win at Coles. During the footy finals, we're giving away 5,000 return flights with Virgin Australia. Just spend $50 or more and scan your Flybys card to enter or get one entry each time you buy selected products. Only at Coles. ATIC Mechanical Repairs. For logbook servicing right through to engine rebuilds and everything in between. Book your vehicle in now for your chance to win a $250 retail gift card. ATIC Mechanical Repairs. For all your mechanical needs. We have a beautiful family home here, ladies and gentlemen. Do I hear one million dollars? It's impossible. One million dollars. I have one million dollars. One million two hundred thousand. Thank you. One million two hundred thousand. It's impossible. How much will this actually cost? How can we even apply? Okay. Now let's get you sorted. Your pre-approval is in. Got it. Thanks. I'll send you the details. Good luck. Getting into your first home might seem impossible, but an ANZ first home coach will help you throughout the journey. This might actually be somewhat possible. Get ready for Bathurst at Super Cheap Auto. With 5 litres of Castrol Edge 10W30 for $35.99. 40% off. Limit 2 per customer. And 30% off the range of Sony Car Audio. Catalogue sale on now. What did you miss most? The mouth-watering Aussie chicken breast, sizzling bacon, or our Big Mac special sauce? Well, the Chicken Clubhouse is back, now in the Macca's Gourmet Creations range. Been to Smart Traveller yet? <laughs> Mum, you know I don't like to plan. What if something happens? And I can't afford to bail you out. Be informed, be prepared. Go to smarttraveller.gov.au Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Are you afraid of the dark? The Footy Show's Dark Room Challenge returns like you've never seen before. And it'll leave you screaming for more. Lady Luck's back, but who is it? Plus Rabbitohs Tragic and Dr. Dr. star Roger Corsa. The Footy Show, tonight, 8.30 on 9. Stretched out with four questions to go for $50,000. Hayley Mills is playing for six grand. Good luck, Hayley. Your friends call you Rachel, do they? Oh, they used to in high school because I used to have this really god-awful front fringe. So I used to look like Leah Michelle, who plays, who played Rachel on Glee. In Glee? Yeah, and then it got to the point where I think it was year eight, we managed to convince my Japanese teacher my name was Rachel, and then he wouldn't believe me that it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Did he, he wasn't a Glee fan, was he? I don't know. Clearly not. Let's go for six thousand dollars. What type of reptile oh, no. is a sidewinder? A lizard. B crocodile. C snake. D turtle. Hmm. I don't know. Snake's jumping out at me, but hmm. yeah, I reckon I might go snake. Fucking see. Fucking see snake. A sidewinder is a snake for six thousand oh, dollars. <laughs> Do 
It's also known as the horned rattlesnake. It's a type of rattlesnake named for its unusual sideways style of movement. I was just thinking because it's the only one that doesn't have legs. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got you there, Haley. Well played. Ten thousand dollars. If you get this right, Chris, you're out of business. Um, if you get it wrong, of course, we've got Luke over there ready to go, and also Chris for twenty and ten thousand respectively. Here we go. Tagalog is a national language of which country? A. Zimbabwe. B. Lao. C. Philippines. D. Tunisia. Hmm. Um, I'm not actually sure. None of them are really jumping out, but... Tagalog. For some reason, Laos is lock in B. Lock in B? Uh, yep. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep? Yeah. It's in. Sorry, that's where it ends, Haley. It's the Philippines. Ah, oh, I was tossing up between the two. Forms the base of the language Filipino, which along with English oh. is the official national language. Oh, fair Good on you. Thank you yes. very much. Good luck with everyone. Yep. Luke Marks. All right, Luke. You ready, mate? I am. Business manager at Caltex. Get this right, I'll give you $1,000. Beautiful. Here comes the question. Essential for growth and sight, retinol is a form of which vitamin? A, A, B, C, D, D, sorry, C, D, D, E. <laughs> a, um, a, sorry, I'll have another go. Sure. A, A, B, C, C, D, D, E. Um, I'm pretty sure vitamin C is attributed with eyesight, so I'll lock in B, C. Lock in B, C yes, for vitamin C, locked yes. in. No, it's A. a. Retinol is found in certain vegetables, fish and dairy products, so essential for growth and sight. Retinol is a form of vitamin A. There you go. Thanks, Luke. No Good on you, buddy. Missed by one. Which means the bloke from the bank wins the money again. Congratulations, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Make you colour blind. Yes. And when you were single, you used to arrange all your clothes to make it easier. When your friends found out about it at work, what'd they do to you? Oh, they messed everything up. I had odd socks and, uh, and shirts that didn't match my trousers. Lynn, do you ever play a bit of a trick on him with his gear? No, I don't, actually. Yeah. Do you ever I think like him to look OK, because oh, okay. he belongs yeah. to me. Fair <laughs> enough. You don't want to be walking alongside him. Chris, yeah. get, uh, you've won $1,000, by the way. Well done, Thank buddy. Thank you very much. Get this one right. You win $10,000. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. What are you going to do with $10,000? $10,000? There's two things I'd like to do. The first one would be to take a trip over the, uh, the Antarctic, have a look uh, at that at sunset, or, uh, and hopefully maybe see a bit of the Aurora Australis. And the other one is to give a little bit of money to um, the PWS Foundation, which is uh, the Prada Willy uh, Syndrome Foundation. My grandson's uh, just been diagnosed with that. Okay. Uh, What's Prada Willy? Well, it, 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 when, the, when they're first born, they're, they're, they're uh, extremely small. Yeah. They can't uh, reproduce, so they're, they're infertile. Yeah. And as they grow older, they uh, have an insatiable appetite. And, okay. uh, and they have to be managed yeah, throughout okay. their life. Good luck, Chris, with yeah. all of that, and to Lynn and to a wonderful cause. We're going to take a break and come back and hopefully win $10,000. Next on 9 News, vandals trash schools and businesses in the northern suburbs. Why the Barnison Boulevard development is causing controversy and the honest Darwin teen who had his generosity returned. We'll see you soon. Chris is in the hot seat, ready to go. Come on, Chris. We want Chris to win 10 grand, don't we? Yeah. Of course we do. Here we go, Chris, for $10,000. In 2015, Anastasia Palaszczuk became the Premier of which Australian state? A. South Australia. B. Western Australia. C. Tasmania. D. Queensland. Uh, I have no idea who's the uh, Premier of Tassie. Uh, Beard or somebody South Australia. Western Australia is a bloke. So, look, I'm, I'm going to lock in D, uh, Eddie. I, I'm pretty sure that it's not the other, so by elimination, I'm going for D. Lock in D, Queensland? Yes. Can I just say before I give you the answer that uh, you've got no idea of those. Uh, none of the things you said there made any sense whatsoever. Um, 
And that's probably because of, I didn't have I think uh, any idea. used to be in uh, New South Wales. Was he? Oh, oh so right, okay. But anyway. Well, he can't be South Australia then. He's no, not allowed to be. Oh, she's not allowed, allowed to be. I assume it's Why a woman. Why is that? Who, Anastasia? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, a man who's uh, a male in South Australia. South Australia. Yeah, yeah. I, might be, I might be wrong. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. You might wrong. be right, though. You've just well, won 10000 Palaszczuk was the first female Premier to have led a party from opposition to government. Congratulations, guys. Thank I think you. you deserve a bit of a break, and I'm glad you've got the $10,000. Chris Betlinski just won $10,000. See you next time in the Millionaire Hot Seat. Good night, everyone. <laughs>
Um, it's very exhausting, um, but on, on top of being exhausting, there's a lot of professionalism that comes with that and a lots, lots of responsibility. Um, so I think the government really need to acknowledge that. Six centres in Darwin took part in the nationwide protest, demanding a 35% pay increase for workers. The controversial same-sex marriage postal vote will go ahead after the High Court unanimous, unanimously threw out two separate challenges. From Tuesday, the $120 million ballot will be mailed out and if the yes vote is carried, marriage equality could be legalised by Christmas. The middle of question time and the answer from the High Court spread immediately to Parliament. The government given the thumbs up, Coalition Conservatives especially were celebrating. Every Australian will have their say and that is as it should be and we encourage every Australian to vote in this survey to have their say. I respect every Australian's view on this matter. The ballots will go out on Tuesday. 16 million can now vote yes or no to same-sex marriage. The result declared on November 15. If yes, a vote's expected in Parliament and expected to pass by the end of the year. If this survey must be, then we must win it. This is a, an issue about human rights and marriage equality. We're going to work our backsides off and win this bloody thing. I very much hope you will vote to protect the family. Outside the High Court, the defeated challengers were greeted as champions. A battle lost, but the fight not over. It is just plain wrong that two men or two women who might love each other are not treated as equals. We must win for loving and committed couples right across the country who just want to get married. The Yes campaign had TV ads ready to go. I'm doing it for my brother. Will the Prime Minister now accept my invitation to write a joint letter to all Australians recommending voting yes to marriage equality? The Leader of the Opposition can make his case and I'll make mine. That case will be yes. The decision means a coalition can avoid another bitter party room brawl and gets the issue off the government's agenda, at least for now. Lane Kelcutt, Nine News. More than half a dozen people have been killed by the monster hurricane Irma, which has roared through the Caribbean, reducing some islands to rubble. The Category 5 storm is now on its way to the United States, triggering mass evacuations in Florida, where a state of emergency has been declared. She bashed her way into the Caribbean with record-setting force. Winds close to 300 kilometres an hour. A giant the size of Tasmania swamping small islands, crashing through coastlines. The island of Barbuda, a direct hit. I journeyed to Barbuda this afternoon. What I saw was heart-wrenching, absolutely devastating. The extent of the destruction in Barbuda is unprecedented. On the island of Antigua, roads were lost under heavy rainfall from the Virgin Islands to Puerto Rico, strong winds and driving rain. Locals ducked for cover, ordered to higher ground, while tourists rode out the storm in their hotel rooms. We've got the wind going about 100 miles per hour. You can really hear it outside. Shaking the doors. From space, there's no mistaking Irma, and she's on her way to mainland USA. A steady stream of traffic as visitors and even storm weathered locals took the only road out of the Florida Keys. Others headed for the airport. Those who were staying boarded up windows. We'll ride out, help clean up when it's done. After Florida was declared a state of emergency, Miami petrol stations are running on empty. Bottled water is becoming scarce. The governor says Irma is not to be underestimated. Yeah, right now, the, it doesn't look like there's go, it's going to go over enough land that's going to have any impact on, on downsizing or slowing down the wind much. Forecasters haven't settled on the exact path Irma will take next, but the chance of a direct hit on Florida is increasing. In the United States, Lizzie Pearl... Nine News. The standoff between North Korea and the United States has taken an unexpected turn, with President Donald Trump declaring military action was not his preferred option. But the US military has installed a high tech missile defence system in South Korea as it prepares for the worst. 
With the world waiting for Kim Jong-un's next move, his archenemy today appeared to show restraint. We're going to see what happens. We'll see what happens. Certainly that's not a first choice, but we will see what happens. Zigzag diplomacy. Just weeks ago, Trump was warning of hell. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. And then tweeted the U.S. was locked and loaded. Today, the president's more mild-mannered approach followed a chat with his Chinese counterpart. President Xi would like to do something. We'll see whether or not he can do it. But we will not be putting up with what's happening at North Korea. It was our own leader who was playing the role of doomsdayer on morning TV. Well, the risk of war, Carl, is greater than it's been since the end of the Korean War. Defence Minister Maurice Payne is in Seoul for an annual forum on global security with the biggest threat to the world just 40 kilometres away. The minister dodged the war word and stuck to the script of sanctions and dialogue. The most important actions we can take as countries in the region and more broadly is to ensure that we support the sanctions regime that the UN Security Council has adopted. But the South Koreans are continuing to take precautions, rolling out four more US anti-missile launches to deal with the fallout of when Kim Jong-un next presses the button. Damien Ryan, Nine News. An ugly altercation between a driver and a cyclist in Sydney has gone from vile words to violence. The cyclist recorded the angry confrontation, but it appears there are two very different sides to the story. A broken bike, a ute stopped in the middle of the road, and a driver seeing red. I'm Lebanese, mate. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna your life, you son of a. Malada Yub unleashes on a 23-year-old cyclist after they collided on Grosvenor Crescent at Summerhill. Take a picture. <laughs> Take a picture, you f***ing so angry. I was afraid of my life because I'm like, I'm filming this guy. He, he's not holding back. Damn, man. Aussie scumbag. Wow. Why my Lebanese get talked about? I'm going to your life. The cyclist, too scared to show his face, says he started filming the expletive-ridden rant after Mr Ayub knocked him off his bike with his ute. He claims tempers first fled after he swerved to avoid the vehicle at an intersection and shouted at him to slow down. I thought he was just going to yell at me, um, but he punches me in the head. But the ute driver insists the vision only shows half of the story and that the cyclist gave him plenty of reasons to lose his cool. He called me a well, that's the problem. I'm see no one hears the two sides of the story. Yeah? I did not use any racial epithets to degrade him whatsoever, and I did flip him the bird. But I feel like if you're going to hit someone with a two-ton car, I feel that's an appropriate gesture to make to someone. I didn't leave the scene. Neither did I punch him. It was an open hand. I slapped him. In the head of the moment, people say things, you know what I mean? You say this and you say that. So, of course, it's not right to do that sort of thing. It will now be up to a magistrate to hear their versions of events. Mr Ayub has been charged with negligent driving, assault and stalking. He'll face court later this month. Elise Baker, Nine News. A teenage girl has been charged after allegedly stabbing another girl during a violent fight at an Adelaide school. The victim was rushed to hospital with multiple wounds, leaving parents horrified. The school day had only just begun when the front of a classroom turned crime scene. Police tape surrounding a group of lockers where a fight between two girls ended with one of them being stabbed. That's really shocking, very shocking to me. Yep. I was upset and very surprised. This is a lovely, lovely school and it's the last thing I would expect. The victim was rushed to the Lyle McEwen Hospital with wounds to her groin, arm and hand. The alleged attacker was interviewed by police before being charged with aggravated assault causing harm. I have three children at the school, so yeah, that's pretty concerning. They're at school, they should be safe and happy. The school very quickly notified the families of the girls involved and say that those who witnessed the incident are now being offered support and counselling. The head of the college says acts of violence are incredibly rare and the incident is very confronting for the community. And it's good that they've notified us 
of what's happening. So, I mean, they always keep us in the loop. It's not known what sparked the fight, which comes less than a fortnight after the suicide of 13-year-old Seaford girl Libby Bell, who'd reported being bullied over a long period. Only this morning, the police commissioner spoke of how he hopes to tackle the issue. We have to be mindful that any law we propose uh, needs to be something we, as a police service, can enact and take action with. So uh, we're, we're looking at what that might look like. The victim of today's attack is in a stable condition. Ben Avery, Nine News. Around 50 people have rallied in Darwin against the development of Barnison Boulevard. The road will create another entry point to the city, but the plan has it cutting through Frogs Hollow Park and critics want that changed. It was a modest crowd, but they demanded to be heard. How dare they? A group of around 50 people united against Barnison Boulevard. The $40 million road will provide a new entrance into Darwin CBD, transitioning from Tiger Brennan Drive down to 50 kilometres an hour across McMinn's and Wood Streets and ending at Kavanagh Street near Woolworths. But in order to do that, it has to split Frog Hollow Park. Frog Hollow is an important green space. It's both important in, from an urban planning point of view and it's important because of its her historical connection. It's an arterial link that's been planned for decades. If we didn't go through Frog Hollow Park, um, we'd end up impacting on local residential streets where they filter off McMinn Street. But critics are also unhappy trees are being removed to make way for the connection. We're removing 50 as part of the project, but another 200 to provide shade trees for the whole length of Barnison Boulevard and that cooling effect, I guess, that shade brings. The department says just 15% of the site will be taken up by roads infrastructure. But critics of the plan say it doesn't matter how much is taken up, that a bitumen path will destroy the heritage site and ruin the ambience of the park. To put a road through and destroy all of that heritage, to me, is sacrilege. The department argues it'll be very different. Try and provide that entrance feel into Darwin that you're entering um, more of a, a inner city suburb. Consultation for the plans is still open. Kathleen Gazzola, Nine News. Clive Palmer's proposed rolling all his lawsuits into one massive mega trial. The billionaires also demanded credit for continuing to give journalists something to report on. Clive Palmer's becoming a repeat offender of calling an impromptu press conference at court. I think it's great the way that I've boosted the media industry across Australia, that I've made your stories more interesting. They could get a whole lot more entertaining if a judge allows Mr Palmer's latest request for a massive mega trial. He's got that many lawsuits before the court. Clive's asked to have them all rolled into one. All the cases seem to be related to the same sort of facts. So it just makes common sense to have them heard all together. A judge will make the final call next month. Meanwhile, a key witness in the case against Queensland Nickel still hasn't showed up for questioning. Clive claims he still hasn't heard a word from his fugitive nephew, the company's former director, Clive Mensink. Well, you know that. You're, you're, you're in court when you got my answer. Any, anyone else got a question? I'm not here to be cross-examined. I'm here to enjoy the sunshine. These wonderful people. Another rendezvous is likely when Clive Palmer returns to court again next week to deal with the legal bid to freeze some of his assets. Despite the risk of losing $200 million, Mr Palmer says he's excited to return. OK, well, God bless you all. Brittany Klein, Nine News. A child's first day of school can make any parent a bundle of nerves, even the Duke of Cambridge, who today saw Prince George off on a new adventure. Tom Steinford is at the campus in south-west London. Tom, there was a notable absentee at drop-off. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, the Duchess of Cambridge couldn't make it down here this morning. She's, of course, still suffering from acute morning sickness after the palace announced that uh, Kate and Will have their third child on the way. But today, it was all about the first child. Little Prince George heading in for a big first day at school at Thomas's in Battersea. And look, normally he's a pretty bubbly young fella, but he did look pretty nervous uh, as he was accompanied by Prince William on the way in here this morning. Uh, the Duke of Cambridge, Dad, helped him. Helped him in by holding his hand and carrying his backpack and then a school staff and met him and walked the young royal inside. Uh, Prince William, he did stick around for about 45 minutes. He drove off about 10 minutes ago, leaving Prince George in there to fend for himself for the first time in his life. Pretty daunting occasion for the young man. Tom Simon, yes, first days anywhere can be rather anxious. Thanks, Tom.
50 years ago, a fresh-faced reporter started making his name working on a landmark current affairs program. Peter Luck went on to become a great storyteller with a passion for his country. Sadly, he has died after battling Parkinson's disease. There was always an inquisitive look about Peter Luck. It was on the inside too. Ned Kelly, for example, he's been alternatively hero or homosexual, but never a somewhat boring Victorian crim. Peter was one of the original reporters on the ABC program This Day Tonight. He had a terrific wit. I mean, he, he, he was funny, he was cheeky, he was rude. It's 1972 and the TV series MASH is... Peter Luck spanned the industry from the heavy-hitting Sunday program on the Nine Network to doing a fill-in stint for the man dubbed the Human Headline. Tonight on Hinch at 7 o'clock. After spending his early career looking at what happened today, and putting it to air that night, Peter Luck harnessed a new passion. He loved being in Australia and he cared very much about telling the stories of this country to its people. You must remember this. Peter hopefully had a chuckle in these recent weeks that an issue he raised 30 years ago, who discovered Australia, was suddenly topical again. To sail around the world and discover lands 30 times bigger than your own and claim them in the name of the king required an 18th century kind of arrogance. So farewell Peter Luck, a man whose life was spent asking questions and finding answers. It's left us feeling a bit schizophrenic, a sort of cross between Leon Trotsky and J. Walter Thompson. And a man who made his mark. He did some great stuff for Channel 9. He won't be remembered all that much because people don't remember journalists. Their mates do. Mark Burrows, Nine News. In the news ahead, the footballer banned for 10 years over a sickening attack on a referee and now police are involved. And a handcuffed woman's mystifying escape from a police car. Get the news as it happens. 9news.com.au. Live, fast and free. When the news breaks, see it first, read it first and watch it live. More video news than any other site. 9news.com.au Live, fast and free. Amanda Taylor was killed in a car driven by boyfriend Blake Seabrook. Now he wants to get his hands on her money. He wants to be paid for killing my daughter. It's not on. A story that will make your blood boil. Looking for Blake. Yeah, what? How can someone kill someone and then expect to get a payout? A current affair next. I'm a bit offended as well, mate. The Sunday that will shock the nation is here. 10,000 couples applied to be on this series of The Block and have the opportunity that you have right now. This is the 30. The explosive drama. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. That will grip you to the very last second. You are off the block. Sunday, 7 o'clock on 9. Get powerful deals at Mazda this Saturday. M-Day. Mazda's only one day, once a year sale. M-Day. Your chance to save. Feel the power of M-Day. This Saturday at your nearest Mazda dealer. Everything you watch on commercial free-to-air television is covered by a code of practice. The code contains key community safeguards relating to program classification, complaints, advertising and news and current affairs. The code has recently been updated to better reflect how you and your family watch TV. For a copy of the new code and information about the complaints handling process, visit the Free TV website at freetv.com.au. For 50 years we have worked in the top end, supporting vulnerable people who are dependent on alcohol and drugs to address their addiction and find a way out. Rehabilitation is not easy and the path not often clear. But with the right support, understanding and compassion, the team at Forward can help you achieve your goals, one step at a time. Forever Forward. 50 years strong, 50 years proud. Rebels Big Shoe Sale is on now. Save $50 on the Asics GT1000 5 runners. Nike downshift to 7 runners now just $79.99. And save $40 on the Reebok Plus runners. Only while stocks last and only at Rebel.
It's spring racing time. It's you, Bet's Rose Hill money back. If your horse finishes second or third in races one to five at Rose Hill, get real money back. Up to $50. Money back even if you don't back the winner. You bet. The stupid impulse to push a young referee in the throat has sent a teenage rugby player sent off, not just for the rest of the game, but for 10 years. The footballer's actions have been condemned by his own club, and the penalty is seen as a warning to players around the country. In one fell swoop, shock and disgrace. The moment Mark Miafua strikes a young referee in the throat during Saturday's under-19s rugby union grand final. It was a showdown between the Maitland Blacks and Newcastle Wanderers. And up until the incident, Miafua had been considered a shoe-in for best and fairest. Now the promising young player banned for the next decade because of this alleged brain snap. We certainly cannot condone what has occurred, um, but it must be said that this is an extremely rare occurrence. Overnight, a two-hour local judicial hearing, which saw the 18-year-old plead guilty to lashing out at 19-year-old Nicholas Gale. Well, there was a fair bit of backlash, uh, as I said before. No one really likes to see uh, that sort of stuff go on in the field. The clip has now been viewed more than 200,000 times online. Going back 30 years, can't remember a, a similar incident. So uh, very surprised and, and shocked that, that that sort of thing would happen. Vision also emerging today of Miafua allegedly kneeing a player from Merriweather during a different match one week prior. Despite being yellow carded, he was allowed to play on in the grand final. Miafua won't be eligible to take to the field again until he's at least 28 years old. He'll face Maitland local court much sooner though. The teenager to appear before a magistrate here on one charge of common assault in four weeks time. The club says both he and the referee have their full support during this time. The 10 year sanction a clear message, however, that any assault on a referee will not be tolerated. Early Walsh, Nine News. Pope Francis has been given a warm welcome by tens of thousands of Colombians as he arrived in Bogota today. The pontiff waved to well wishes as he weaved through the streets on his Pope Mobile. The aim of the five day visit is to promote peace. Protesters have toppled a paper mache effigy of US Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Over the President Trump's plan to deport thousands of undocumented immigrants who came to the United States as children, the Obama administration created the protections to allow 800,000 who entered the country illegally as minors to receive deferred deportation and eligibility for a work permit. A Texas woman has pulled a Houdini Act, managing to slip out of her handcuffs before stealing a police car. Tosha Sponsler was caught on camera leading officers on a 23-minute chase with speeds of up to 160 kilometres per hour. She's facing multiple charges, including escape with the threat of a deadly weapon, unauthorised use of a vehicle and resisting arrest. It's finals time in our major football codes and tonight the action begins in Adelaide when the Crows host GWS. Amy Colbert joins us now with more and Amy, a capacity crowd is expected at Adelaide Oval. Yeah, Jono, it's going to be a huge one when the Crows clash with Greater Western Sydney in their qualifying final. Already it's clear Adelaide is in the grip of finals fever and for some that kicked in earlier today than for others. Yay! Crows fan Jared Pays was so excited for tonight's final he couldn't sleep so he got to the gates 10 hours before they opened. What time did you get in this morning mate? 7 o'clock. I've been like this. All day, all day yesterday. Eventually, thousands more joined him. Crows fans familiar with the queues, but finals are different. There's more anticipation and more nerves. Yeah, Wait till, yeah. till, till we get in there. It'll be, it'll be rocking. It'll be rocking. <laughs> yeah, a bit nervous, but hopefully we'll smash it out and get the win, yeah. First time Definitely. the Oval for me and my daughter. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Crows are going to win for sure. For some, a pre-match drink was the way to stay calm. Finals fever well and truly hitting town. Cheers! I think uh, Crows by 30 points. 
fingers crossed we have a win. Blue, red and yellow all round, but not so much of the GWS orange, although Nine News was there when the Giants players opted for a warm-up in an odd location, Hindmarsh Square. Tom Scully dodged cars and there was a little local hostility. And I hope the boys give them a sound uh, beating tonight. But there was a small show of support as well. We've come from Sydney last night and we're pretty excited. Do you guys think you might be the only Giants fans in the whole stadium tonight? <laughs> we're a bit worried about that. We certainly were on the plane coming over last night, so uh, hopefully we won't be. Reporter Jared Brevy there in Adelaide and I'll be back with more as the new Rabbitohs coach gets through his first day on the job. Find out what Russell Crowe had to say to him today. And Nathan Lyon turns the second test against Bangladesh right into Australia's grasp. Jono, that's coming up shortly. So you soon, Amy, thank you. Still ahead, the new test that can diagnose Parkinson's disease even before there are any symptoms. A territory students swap the classroom for some fresh air. And meet Maisie, the newborn who's already smashed a record. Victor's been bowling and sinking beers. Now the breath test. Will he get a perfect strike? What do I do? New RBT, tonight on Nine. Are you afraid of the dark? The footy show's darkroom challenge returns like you've never seen before. And it'll leave you screaming for more. Lady Luck's back, but who is it? Plus Rabbitohs Tragic and Dr. Doctor star Roger Corsa. The footy show, tonight, 8.30 on Nine. Better are your local laundry experts. So come in store today to see the range of washers from top and front load washers to washer and dryer combos. Plus, we can deliver and install your new washer. Better deals every day. That's better. Steel Line GRP, the Territory's local providers of Blue Scope, Calibond, and Enduro Frame steel products. Steel Line GRP, supplying the Territory with Australian made steel roofing materials, purlins, wall frames, and now trusses. Enduro Frame steel frames designed to last, built from non combustible materials, termite proof, and resistant to warping or rot. Lightweight, allowing for easy handling and safer installation. Steel Line GRP, competitively manufacture steel house frames to your exact requirements. For local service over and above, see Steel Line GRP. Footy Fever at Sky City, your footy finals destination. Join us on Saturdays and Sundays this month and play Cash Fest. Your chance to score a share in $100,000 worth of cash prizes. Ten winners are guaranteed every weekend. So if you want to kick some goals and score some cold hard cash, join the team and play Cash Fest at Sky City, your footy finals destination. Pack up the family and head to the Palmerston Game Fishing Club's 30th Hum and Bird Corroboree Park Challenge. From the 13th to the 15th of October, come fish the infamous Corroboree Billabong for your chance at glory. Plus, all registered competitors enjoy free camping at the Corroboree Park Tavern. Once off the waters, enjoy live music, casting challenges, movies under the stars for the little tackers and thousands in cash and prizes up for grabs. Registration forms available online for the 30th Hum and Bird Corroboree Park Challenge. Jack's wife, Jill, knows his birthday is just around the corner and needs to find the perfect gift. Of course, NTF. Jill knows they service all of the NT and stock all the big brands. Power tools and fasteners to keep Jack busy. NTF have it. Safety equipment to keep Jack safe. NTF have it. Do you deliver? NTF do. Jill made just one stop at NTF. Use the one account, save time and money. NTF, the construction supplies and power tool specialists. Kulalinga and Barama. Get to Godfrey's for half price deals like this. Half price for this powerful Hoover hand stick. It comes with a deep cleaning brush and quickly turns into a handbag for a total top to bottom clean. Now half price, an incredible $149. Half price deals, but only at Godfrey's. Australia's Boozy Council vendors caught on camera. How many have you had tonight, Mr. Mayor? Few. I haven't broken any law. A current affair next. A police officer who was hit by a speeding car in Sydney has been released from hospital. The senior constable took a heavy tumble when he was run down by a driver he'd been trying to pull over on Tuesday night. Incredibly, he escaped the ordeal with a single broken bone. The driver of the car is still on the run. Australian researchers have developed a new screening test for Parkinson's, indicating if someone has the disease even before physical symptoms develop. The assessment is remarkably simple and effective.
When 67-year-old Peter Honey's hand started relentlessly shaking 20 years ago, he was eventually diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. You know something's wrong, but you're not sure what it is. Partner Elsie Menon, who he met at a yoga class, also endured countless medical appointments before her diagnosis. For me to accept Parkinson was a bit hard. I thought that was the end of my life. While Parkinson's is the most common neurological disorder after dementia, there is no diagnostic test for it. So many people suffer unknowingly for years before symptoms are recognised and treatment begins. By the time patients start having tremors or the shakes or stiffness, slowness of movements, 80% of the brain cells have already died. Now, Australian researchers have developed a new screening tool to help indicate early on if someone has Parkinson's. Patients are instructed to draw a spiral, which is analysed by specially developed software. What we're looking for is uh, the way they draw the spiral, the speed, the pressure. A loss of dexterity is one early indicator of the condition. And there is where the difference between a person with Parkinson's disease and the person without Parkinson's disease is. Another advantage of this spiral test is it's not language dependent, meaning it can be rolled out worldwide and the results won't get lost in translation. The test is proving 93% accurate, but more refinements are needed before it becomes routine. And when it comes to living with Parkinson's, knowledge is power. If I can control the uh, the, the Parkinson's, the rest of my life seems to fall into place pretty well. Being positive is the best thing for me. Emily Rice, Nine News. The Territory students took part in a global program which has seen children swap classrooms for outdoor areas to complete schoolwork today. 85% of students spend less than two hours outside per day and taking things outdoors is proven to have benefits. The students are much more engaged with their learning when they're outdoors and they're doing hands-on activities that helps them to be able to make connections between what they're learning and why and how that uh, is relevant to their learning. Parap Primary has created a purpose-built outdoor learning area for their students to use. Baby Joy has been a bigger than expected surprise for one Queensland family who recently welcomed their second daughter to the world. Weighing six kilograms, little Maisie is anything but, claiming the title of the biggest bub ever born at Rockhampton Hospital. Barely three days old, these chubby cheeks are already the talk of the town. But as soon as they pulled her out, as they held her up and, oh my God, <laughs> it was just huge. Maisie Lily McDonald breaking records the moment she took her first breath. The biggest girl born at the Rockhampton Hospital, delivered by C-section, weighing in at a little more than six kilos or 13 pounds, four ounces, the old fashioned way. I did not expect her to be 13 pounds. Maisie's the couple's second child. Big sister Aubrey already doting on her not so little sister. I'm, I'm happy, I'm so proud. They certainly make them big here. Here in Queensland, Ipswich newborn Jake Maguire tipped the scales at 6.04 kilograms when he was born in 2015. But perhaps it's something in the central Queensland water supply because it's young Ollie Stock, also from Rocky, who still holds the biggest baby record, born a whopping 6.76 kilos. From a medical point of view, bigger is not always better. Health experts say with larger babies, there is increased risk of obesity and developing diabetes as they get older. There's some big babies that are bouncing and healthy and there's some big babies that need some extra special care and attention. Ollie is now four and a half and is expected to start prep in the new year. He is thriving but is prone to asthma and chest infections. He doesn't have too many attacks these days so he is doing fantastic. And for now is quite happy hanging on to the Chubba Bubba title. Emily Prane, Nine News. Amy's back now with more sport and the Rabbitohs are revealed the real reason Michael Maguire couldn't continue as coach. Yeah, that's right, John. We'll have all the details next. Plus, the Roosters' game plan headed into finals. The Swiss master stopped in his tracks by an Argentine favourite. And after a poor performance with the bat, Nathan Lyon makes amends with the ball. The real reason why the father of footy superstar Dustin Martin has been banned from returning to Australia to watch his son play. A current affair next.
So was allowing Petrick to take those hormones a mistake? This Aussie mum helped her 12-year-old son change his body. It's quite dramatic. You, you changed your mind, didn't you? Yeah. Is it too late to take it all back? But your boy's got breasts. 60 Minutes, Sunday. This just has to be the ultimate way to experience the Northern Territory's famous barramundi fishing. Your exclusive helicopter flight will reveal the awesome wetlands, landscapes and wildlife that the NT has hidden. Catching a barra is only part of the magnificent experience a Helifish tour provides. You can start planning your tour now with full details on the Helifish website. Thinking Solar Power Solutions? Think Delta Electrics, specialising in design, installation and service of a wide range of solar power systems since 1985. Delta offer competitive pricing, Australian-made solar panels, battery storage systems, long-term local support. From large-scale commercial to home power systems, reduce your costs from day one. Delta Electrics, your local and trusted power solutions partner since 1969. Fashion comes and goes, but one thing that never goes out of style is quality. For over 50 years, Dabsco has been Darwin's supplier of quality blinds, awnings, security screens, crimsafe and home improvement products. We will have a quality product to make your home beautiful. And so affordable. At Dabsco, our quality never goes out of style. Hey Mick, been day tick, what'd you have done? Logbook service, new tyres, and they fixed my aircon. Sounds like A Tick do everything. They're my one stop mechanical shop. A Tick Mechanical, nothing comes close. Dining out in Palmerston? Try the Fork and Dagger Bar and Grill. Families love our weekend buffet brunch and you'll love our steaks. Breakfast, lunch and dinner every day at the Fork and Dagger Bar and Grill. Planning a conference, wedding or special event? You don't have to do it alone. Talk to one of our friendly event coordinators. Our large ballroom and small intimate event facilities are sure to impress you and your guests. Ridges Palmerston, a great place to meet. There's a lot of history and family expertise in Quack Pest Control, which is why we've been working on properties around Darwin since 1968. Today, we still invest in excellent client service with same-day response times and annual reminders. We're specialists in general pest treatments, termite elimination, new construction preparation and pre-purchase inspections. Call Quack Pest Control. Visit the website to see the patients we specialise in. Quack Pest Control. All our patients die. Tonight's sports report is proudly brought to you by Harvey Norman Electrical. Shop with confidence. Shop online and collect from the store. As Rabbitohs coach, you don't want the thumbs down from Russell Crowe, but Anthony Seabold has been given the Gladiators' seal of approval as he takes over from Michael Maguire. Today, the club explained its reasoning for making the change. Anthony Seabold has been the man behind the man for 11 years at various clubs. Today, the assistant was appointed as head coach after Michael Maguire was moved on. The decision to uh, mutually part company on Tuesday was the toughest decision in my 30 years in football. Results made it impossible to keep Maguire. Two years in a row, we won 18 from 52 games. Seabold has been a mate of Maguire's for 20 years. The last 24 hours have been emotional for the pair. Did you almost seek Michael Maguire's permission to do this, given that you're close friendship? No, listen, as I said, um, you know, Rich had a conversation with me yesterday morning. It's the first conversation that we've had in around the coaching role. Uh, I didn't accept straight away. Um, I said, Why not? I just I wanted, to, wanted to have a think about it. Obviously, um, you know, um, 12 hours earlier, uh, you know, your, your mate and your head coach uh, get sacked. Seabold is giving up his role as Kevin Walters' assistant at Queensland, but he says that position has given him the confidence he'll succeed. I'm looking at your hair, there's a bit of grey there already, mate. Yeah, yeah I know, mate. Well, I'm 42, so I'm not a, as a, you know, some people, people say, you know, overnight success. So I've been in the game for 11 years and had some good days and some tough days, so. Are you ready for the madness of it all? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you probably can never be, 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 uh, be ready. At South, there's no greater asset than having the owner on your side. What's Russell Crowe said to you? I did get a text from Russell yesterday. Um, 
and uh, he just said uh, he's there if, if I need to talk to him. So, how much does that mean to you? That's pretty important, I yeah, guess. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty surreal, I suppose. Um, you know, I've had a little bit to do with Russell here during the year, but um, you know, uh, yeah, get a text from him yesterday afternoon, just making sure everything uh, was okay, and, uh, and uh, that if I needed an ear, that he was there. Danny Widler, Nine News. Roosters coach Trent Robinson believes the first week of the finals is the most important as his team look to build momentum in September. The Tricolours host Brisbane tomorrow night and they are wary of the Broncos' reinforcements brought in to cover injuries. Trent Robinson has a blunt message for his players. Start fast because there's no catching up. You can't get going as the finals go on. You've got to start from week one. Um, they're tough games. Uh, the physical games and the, and the team that can handle it the best uh, often gets through to that third weeks. The Broncos arrived in Sydney this afternoon without skipper Darius Boyd. That means Benji Marshall will start in the halves, a switch that worries the Roosters coach. Well, Benji's, you know, probably the most experienced player on the field. You know, he's, a, he's got good eyes, uh, good attacking ability. Um, so, you know, we're going to be careful at that and we're going to make sure that we... Uh, that we apply pressure when needed. High flyer Daniel Tupo is back from injury, boosting the tricolours to full strength. Wayne Bennett's men aren't intimidated. Nothing they're going to throw at us tomorrow that we can't handle. I'm sure they'll throw plenty at us, but like I said, it's not. You don't get to where we get, and you know, we've been there the last three years without being, doing a lot of things good and being able to handle a lot of tough situations. So that, those things aren't, aren't issues for us. Travelling away from home isn't an issue for the super coach either. Well, there's a few grounds around the country you'd prefer not to be at, but Arlington's is not one of those. Jake Duke, Nine News. Australia is closing in on victory in the second test in Bangladesh. The Aussies took a 72-run lead into the second innings before Nathan Lyon started to rip through the home team's batting lineup. Lyon has so far claimed five wickets. That takes his match tally to 12. Bangladesh is eight for 154, leading now by 82 runs. Roger Federer has lost a Grand Slam singles match for the first time this year, going down to Juan Martín del Potro in the quarterfinals of the US Open. Federer admitted his game was off all tournament and feared del Potro may have had his measure before walking on court. Del Potro advances to a semi-final against Rafael Nadal, who strode through the quarters in straight sets. Bit of a surprise there, Jono, that's sport. It was indeed. Amy, thank you very much. In the news ahead, the latest headlines. Plus, from credit cards to home and car loans, the hidden fees costing you thousands of dollars. A police officer left clinging to a car after a bizarre traffic stop. And a little bit of good karma for an honest Darwin teen who made this Fisho's day. Listen to this roar now. It all kicks off Friday with the Roosters Broncos blockbuster. Oh, yes. Then Saturday, an epic doubleheader. Storm Eels. Run, run, run. And Sea Coast Panthers. Finals footy live and free on nine. Volksfest 2017 is now on, so don't miss out on this season of great deals across a range of Volkswagen models, like the Polo Urban, yours from only $16,990 drive away, and now with $1,500 of extra value. Volkswagen. It's finals time. It's you bet AFL head-to-head -head handout. If your team leads by 18 or more, then losers get real money back. Up to $50, money back, either they crash and burn, you bet. Gamble responsibly. Pack up the family and head to the Palmerston Game Fishing Club's 30th Hum and Bird Corroboree Park Challenge. From the 13th to the 15th of October, come fish the infamous Corroboree Billabong for your chance at glory. Plus, all registered competitors enjoy free camping at the Corroboree Park Tavern. Once off the waters, enjoy live music, casting challenges, movies under the stars for the little tackers and thousands in cash and prizes up for grabs. Registration forms available online for the 30th Hum and Bird Corroboree Park Challenge. Licensed clubs in the NT support our local economy by sponsoring and supporting local community sporting groups, schools, charity organisations and support services. They provide valuable jobs and provide opportunities for our youth. Licensed clubs are not-for-profit organisations, which means profits go straight back into our community. Are you supporting your local club? Clubs NT. Investing in our community. 
October Business Month is supporting Territory Business with a month of exciting high-profile speakers and events. Featuring the inspiring Taria Pitt, Atomic 212 Creative Media CEO Jason Douris, small business expert Nigel Collin, former Australia Rugby League captain Wayne Pearce, and CEO of the Melbourne Football Club Peter Jackson. Hear inspirational stories, innovative ideas, and enjoy great networking opportunities. Register now at obm.nt.gov.au. Authorised by the Northern Territory Government, Darwin. Last year, Australia's official lotteries contributed over $1.1 billion to help support our communities, like in hospitals, schools and sporting groups. The signs are everywhere. When Australia dreams, we all win. Why tyre power? It's more than just the power of lower prices. You get the power of a big range of big brands. And the power of service that keeps you coming back. Why would you buy your tyres anywhere else? Get the power. Get the tyre power. Get the power of Australia's biggest independent. Australia's boozy council vendors caught on camera. How many have you had tonight, Mr. Mayor? Few. I haven't broken any law. A current affair next. Returning to our top stories, authorities were expecting the worst today. Extreme conditions had fire crews on high alert, ready to respond to any bushfire that broke out. And thankfully, we have escaped relatively unscathed. But Bushfires NT is warning locals there will be more severe conditions tomorrow. Australians will get to have their say on same-sex marriage after the High Court unanimously threw out all legal challenges involving the controversial postal vote. And locals have gathered to protest the development of Barnison Boulevard. The road will create another entry point to the city, but some residents don't want it cut cutting through Frog Hollow Park. A New South Wales MP who was the target of an extortion attempt at a New York City hotel has spoken for, for the first time. Police are investigating after two men demanded money from Gareth Ward after he ordered an in-room massage. They started to get particularly aggressive and started filming and making accusations. Um, I, thought, I felt I had to get these people out of my room as quickly as I could. I can assure you, the only thing that rubs me up the wrong way is the New South Wales Labor Party. Mr Ward says while the ordeal was traumatic, he's looking forward to getting back to work. Imagine what you could do with a spare $5,000. That's almost how much Australian households are currently paying in fees you probably don't even know about. But there is a way to save that extra money and it's easier than you think. Credit cards, home loans and car purchases. Most have one thing in common and that's hidden fees. On closer inspection, mother of two Natalie Lattimore was shocked at the amount of money coming out of her account. I just assumed that when I signed any mortgage or credit card that I was signing up to that they would kind of talk me through them all then. I didn't realise that there would be so many that I actually had no idea I was paying. Analysis by Rate City found the most Australians are paying is up to $4,670 a year in hidden fees. Credit cards were paying on average $130.53 in annual fees. With home loans, the average ongoing charge is $339.33. For transaction accounts, the admin fees are on average $55. Car loan monthly fees average at 84 and while all superannuation funds incur a fee, the amounts can vary. On $50,000, the average fee is $631 a year. The average Australian is shelling out thousands of dollars in fees every year, a lot of which are avoidable. When it comes to home loans, experts say there are almost 1,980 products on the market where there are no annual fees. They argue it's well worth shopping around and negotiating for the best deal. You should never accept what you're given. You should always ask for a lower rate or ask for that fee to be waived. Natalie is now going to re-evaluate all her hidden fees to make some simple savings. Well, I've got two kids, a three and a one-year-old, so any money kind of that I can save to, to spend on something for them is, uh, yeah, money better spent. Vicky Jardim, Nine News. A man's daring run from police hasn't quite gone to plan in China. Two officers threw themselves onto the car when it rolled through a routine traffic stop, one falling to the ground as the driver picked up speed. The remaining policeman clung to the bonnet for a two-kilometre trip down the highway. The wild ride coming to an end when the man was boxed in and arrested. 
If you stumbled across a rod and reel on the side of the road worth more than $1,000, some would consider it a lucky find and take it home. But when a local 13-year-old was faced with the same situation, he went straight to the internet to track down its rightful owner. It's more than just a bit of gear. Oh, he got a rod and reel from Trace. A rod and reel. So when Rob Blankenship lost his Stellar 8000 off the top of his car, he was shattered. It's worth around $1,300 and landed him game fish, including this yellowfin tuna in East Timor. There was a couple of trophy fish we caught with that particular rod, so it wasn't so much a matter of replacing it, which everything's replaceable, it's just the, uh, the feeling of uh, what that rod's caught and the times that I've had with it. Lucky for Rob, it wouldn't be the last time he saw it. 13-year-old Sol Healy Morrison and a friend found it on the corner of Fitzer and Dickward Drive. I ran across the road, grabbed it and it cast off me and I ran back. And while it would have been nice to take home and keep. If I was catching fish on it, it wouldn't be the same because it, I knew it wasn't my rod. So he set about finding the rod's rightful owner, posting an ad on Facebook. Soon enough, the ad got a nibble from Rob, who was able to prove it was his. I thought someone might find it and someone did and I was happy to give it back to them. Huge tap on the back and um, I think it's just recognising, you know, we've got great kids in the Territory and um, people do do the right thing and it's good to be able to recognise that. What goes around comes around as they say. Today, Sol got a good dose of karma. Rob surprised the honest teen with a brand new combo. You serious? Yep, yeah, well done. It's just good getting outdoors and having a few flicks, but it's even better when you start catching fish. Tight line, Sol. Thank you so much. Henry Jones. Nine News. Izzy's back now with a look at weather. Izzy, how's the weekend looking? Should be a bit cooler, Jono. After the break, I'll have all the weather details. The real reason why the father of footy superstar Dustin Martin has been banned from returning to Australia to watch his son play. A current affair next. Now, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. The Sunday that will shock the nation. You are off the block. Is here. Breakfast and lunch just got very exciting at H Hotel on Smith Street with a fresh, fabulous and new a la carte breakfast menu together with a mouth-watering, sensational $15 lunch special. Why venture too far from the city? H Hotel on Smith Street. You're all welcome. October Business Month is supporting Territory Business with a month of exciting high-profile speakers and events. Featuring the inspiring Taria Pitt, Atomic 212 Creative Media CEO Jason Douris, small business expert Nigel Collin, former Australia Rugby League captain Wayne Pearce, and CEO of the Melbourne Football Club Peter Jackson. Hear inspirational stories, innovative ideas, and enjoy great networking opportunities. Register now at obm.nt.gov.au. Authorised by the Northern Territory Government, Darwin. Australians have recycled over 30 million printer cartridges through Cartridges for Planet Art. That adds up to 13,000 tonnes of valuable resources that people like you have saved from landfill. So what do you think these garden beds are made of? Printer cartridges. Recycled printer cartridges. Drop your cartridges into the boxes at participating retail outlets or get a box for your work. Find out more at cartridges.planetarc.org. The Northern Territory has always been Adventure Territory. There's one place that's been supplying locals and visitors with outdoor adventure gear since 1977. The NT General Store has got everything you need to go bush. Whether it's camping, hiking and exploring, the NT General Store has a treasure trove of stock to get you going and a whole lot more you probably didn't even know you need. You'll still find us where we've always been, right in the heart of the city. Your adventure awaits, but you'd be mad to go bush without seeing us first. October Business Month is supporting Territory Business with a month of exciting high-profile speakers and events. Featuring the inspiring Taria Pitt, Atomic 212 Creative Media CEO Jason Douris, small business expert Nigel Collin, former Australia Rugby League captain Wayne Pearce, and CEO of the Melbourne Football Club Peter Jackson. 
Hear inspirational stories, innovative ideas, and enjoy great networking opportunities. Register now at obm.nt.gov.au. Authorised by the Northern Territory Government, Darwin. Sylvia swims with sharks. Live tomorrow on Today. It was sunny, dry and windy in Darwin today and it certainly felt hot. Right now in the city it's 28 degrees, the humidity is 39%. The city was very warm, the maximum of 36, 4 degrees above the September average. Temperatures sat between 15 and 38 degrees down the track, the humidity dropped down to 12% by 3pm. It was a gorgeous sunny day in Nullumboy, hitting a top of 31 degrees, warming Catherine 35, while Yulara hit 28. Taking a look around the country now, and Adelaide could see a possible morning shower, heading for a top of 14. It'll be chilly in Hobart, just 3 to 9 degrees. A cool spring day for Sydney, 21. It'll be fine and sunny across the Territory tomorrow. Catherine's looking at a top of 35. Tennant Creek's heading for 29, 9 to 25 in Yulara. If you're starting the weekend early and taking out the boat, seas will increase to around 1 metre at midday. East to south easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, turning east to north easterly in the early afternoon. Bit of movement in the tides tomorrow. The highest tide will come in at 7.32 at 7.4 metres. The sun will be up at 6.45. If you're casting a line, there's a few barra out in the Harbour Arms heading to Six Mile Boy on the top of the tide for mackerel or have a look around Cape Hatham for jewies. We're told Damien was jumping for joy after landing this 69 centimetre barra on the alligator. We would be too, Damien. It's a great catch and enjoy your prize pack. A scorcher for those in the rural area tomorrow. It'll hit a top of 38 degrees at Humpty Doo. Be hot in Palmerston as well. 37 is the expected top there. Thankfully, it will be cool tonight, dropping down to 17 degrees. And you won't find any relief from the heat in the city, heading for 36 degrees tomorrow, 19 tonight. Thankfully, it will get a little bit cooler over the weekend. 35 degrees the top on Saturday, 34 Sunday, and we should see some lovely cool nights dropping to 19 degrees. Jono. Yes, thank you. To finance before we go, our market has closed only slightly higher, up just under one point. And our dollar has jumped to end the day above 80 US cents. And that's Nine News this Thursday. I'm Jonathan Upton from all of us here. Good night. Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. It's one thing to enjoy a couple of drinks with workmates at the end of a day on the job, but it's another to carry on like these local councillors who get stuck right into it after hours 